All right, so now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's go and take a look at the equation 3x minus 2y equals 5, and negative 6 plus 4y equals 7. Now, if we were going to solve this using substitution, um, then we'd have to solve for one of the variables. And you can see why I like using substitution, because to solve for one of these variables, it's not like it's hard, but a lot of times it's not, you know, we like when it's easy to solve for a variable when, it, when you have a coefficient of 1. Because let's just pretend we want to solve for a variable here and use substitution. So let's go ahead and solve for this x, right? If I was going to do the same process I did last time, I would take negative 6x plus 4y equals 7. To solve for x, you subtract 4y, and you get negative 6x equals negative 4y plus 7. Divide by negative 6, you get x equals um, a positive 2 thirds y minus 7, 6. Do you guys want to do substitution with these fractions? No, right? So you can see how it's, yes? I'll be over with you guys in just a second to go with this. Um, but I want you guys to confirm with each other and see if you guys agree in fourth thirds. And I'll go over all those problems. So look over here, and you got, yeah, you don't want to do substitution with this. It's not going to be very much fun. So that's why we have elimination. Uh, it's just an example for you guys. You don't have to write that down. It wasn't actually part of the problem. If you want to write it down, I mean, that's well, fine. You can do substitution that, that way. Um, yeah, that's right. So what we want to do for elimination is we still need to, we're still going to solve for the values of x and y. But rather than solving for a variable and plugging it into the other equation, we're simply just going to add or subtract our equations. Now, I'm just going to do this kind of in my head. If you guys look at these two equations, if you add these two equations, are you going to get a coefficient of 0 for either x or for y if you add no. these up? No. No. If you subtract them, will you get yes. a coefficient of 0? Yes. Well, 3x minus 6x is uh, positive 9x. Negative 2y minus 4y is going to be negative 6y. So even if we add or subtract, we're always going to have a number as a coefficient. So the way to eliminate a variable is to have 0 as its coefficient, because 0 times a variable is always going to be 0, which in case eliminates the variable. Yes? So what hopefully you guys will see, the reason why neither of our variables are going to be eliminated, because they don't have the same coefficient. So what we need to do is there's kind of steps. The first thing we want to do in elimination is make sure our variables are aligned. Sometimes you guys are going to get equations, Renee, where the variables are not aligned. I might have x's over here, y and y over here. So, so you want to make sure you, lay, you align them x over x, y over y. The next step is, if they don't already have the same coefficients, is we need to use multipliers. Meaning I can multiply by numbers. I can multiply a whole equation by a number and still keep that same equation. For instance, x equals 4. If I multiply by 2 on both sides, I get 2x equals 8. Is 2x e over 8 the still the same thing as x over 4? Yes. So as long as I multiply the whole equation by a number, I have equivalent equations. So first thing I think is first is which variable would you guys like to eliminate, the x or the y? The y. y. OK. So here, you can see that. Forget about the negatives for a second. Let's just figure it. Let's just focus on um, the, the absolute value of the number. So I have 2 and 4. So what would be the common multiple of 2 and 4? What is the smallest number that 2 and 4 Eight. both divide into? Eight. This one's so hard for students. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. These are what we call multiples of a number. Okay? These are all numbers that the number 2 divide into. Now let's write the multiples of 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. What is the smallest number that both of these share, that they divide into? Four. Four. That is what we call <coughs> our least common multiple. All right. Now, so that means I want to get my coefficient of my variable y to both be 4. Well, this one's already 4. So to get this to be 4, forget about the negative. To get this to be 4, I need to multiply it by what? 2. Two. So this is what we call our multiplier. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, you need to multiply both equations to get them to have common multiples or common coefficients. So when I multiply, I apply distributive property, and I get 6x minus 4y equals 10. 
And then over then I just rewrite this one down below, negative 6x plus 4y equals 7. OK? Now you add or subtract. So if I have a negative 4y plus a positive 4y, should I add or subtract them to get 0? One's negative, but one's positive. So now, but guess what? Look at this. 6x minus 6x is 0x. Negative 4y plus 4y is 0y. And then this equals 17. So I have 0 equal to 17. Is that true or is that false? That's false. So think about graphing, ladies and gentlemen. When we had something that was not true, what type of, what type of lines did we have? Or what type of solution do we have? No solution. no solution. And when do we have no solution? What type of lines? They don't intersect. They don't intersect so we call them parallel. parallel lines. So this is a case where you'd write no solution. So if you have an equation at the end where they do not equal each other, then you'd write no solution. OK? So that would be a case of no solution. And if you guys were to graph them, those would be parallel lines. Now, let's look at another case. <coughs> 